Well, thank you, Susan. That was lovely. And life is one of the, uh, the 12 powers that I'll be talking about today. And I will be speaking about release. And release has kind of got a couple of names that it goes by the, the faculty of release, renunciation, elimination. And the, uh, I, loved, I loved all of your Bible verses that you chose today, but the one about the putting the new wine into the old wineskins, or rather putting them in the new wineskins, how much better and how much more sense that makes, is the one that I feel is really the most applicable to us and to our way of thinking. You know, if we come from a, um, a way of thinking where our, our thoughts are in any way limitations that, put on, we, that are put on us or that we have accepted because of things we may have learned somewhere along the line or maybe even from our church. And then we come into new thought and we're hearing these much more positive ideas and these perhaps much more positive ways that we can uh, be thinking and holding thoughts in our minds and, in, and um, really turn our life around. Because we can't, we can't really move ahead if we are not willing to move, ahead, move forward from limiting thought. Now, does anyone, did I make that clear? We cannot really, um, we, we just can't move on if we refuse to change our old way of thinking. When we come into unity and other new thought religions, or denominations, we are given a whole new way of thinking. We are giving a whole, given a whole new way of, think, of thinking about many, many things, one of the first of them being where God is and what is our relationship to God. If we continue to keep thoughts of God separate from us and up in the heavens somewhere, and refuse to bring out the understanding of God down into our heart, we are limited in just the way we can move forward in our life. In her book, um, Lessons in Truth, we kind of catch that idea in Emily Cady's, H. Emily Cady's first chapter, and I realized the meaning of words perhaps change over the years, but it was called liberty or bondage which. We can't have it both ways. We can't be limited, we can't be kept in a box of a certain way of thinking and yet be totally free. So this is what this whole idea of, of release is all about. And really we can, we may not, this may not be the best way to think of it, but, but we can think about it like when we sit down and eat way more than we know we should eat. You know, anybody ever do that? Yeah, and you know, you just kind of feel bloated and it's like, oh, why did I do that? But after a while, nature will have taken care of releasing that overabundance of food that we ate. And then there we are, oh, I feel better now. I, I can get on with things. So that's kind of the way it is with our thoughts and our thinking. So we cannot put, we should not put, and we shouldn't word, use the word should, but it's best if we don't then try to put our new way of thinking, our new way of understanding and of showing up in life into those old thoughts that we may have carried to this place with us. So that's why we're talking about releasing and letting go. And that, that whole understanding of releasing and letting go and letting God ties in with that whole idea of releasing and getting on with life in a new way, getting on with life in a new way as we assimilate those wonderful new ideas that we've gotten in, taken in, are willing to take into our life. And we are more likely to become aware that our life is 
in the hands. And once again, we have we almost have to use these anthropomorphic terms to get the idea across. Our lives are in the hands of a much higher, a much more loving, gentle power and presence than we ever thought possible. So when we say, I release and let go and let God, we are referring to our thoughts then, so that we can enter into this whole new healed life, if you will. And you know, I know that many of us, and many of us that are just in this small group here, have been exposed to these unity teachings for many, many years. And on many levels, we, we have included them in our life. And you know, in a very real way, I was having a conversation with the other, with a friend the other day, who really comes from a much more fundamentalist background and often uses terms that like, to unity, it's like, ooh, we don't ever say that. But my friend was reminding me that each time we show up in our life, that we have, you know, worked with these 12 powers, and because that's what the theme that we're going with, we'll just stay with that. We show up with a new life. And when we do that, we are really being evangelists. I bet there's not too many of you, except maybe those of, who haven't had the unity background that most of us have had, that think of ourselves as evangelists. I mean, who do you think of when you think of an evangelist? John the Baptist? Lots of, lots of people, might even be some people that we know. Might even be someone like my daughter, which, you know, we, we kind of have a, a whole different way of approaching life. So, but I like the idea that this wonderful friend shared with me about being an evangelist. Because that's what we are doing every single time, I believe, that we incorporate truth teachings into our life and we live our life showing that we are free, we are unlimited, that God is only good and good all the time. And to the degree that we focus on the peace and presence of God, it's always there. We love to talk about miracles. We, and what happens when, when a miracle really occurs in our life? Well, in unity and in metaphysics, which two people in this wonderful group have finally taken it upon themselves, and boy, does this do good to a minister's heart. They are studying on their own unity metaphysics. Can you believe it? They have been touched in a way that they knew. They, they caught the awareness that perhaps this is a time to just change my life, to see things differently. I had never heard of the, the person who authored the book that they are reading, and I was a little concerned at first. And I thought, oh, who is out there writing about unity metaphysics? I don't recognize this name, and heaven knows I've been around for a long, long time. And this morning, one of them brought the book in, because they knew I had a little concern. They picked right up on that. And I'm looking at the front of the book, and they have the best teachers in the world that wrote, that they instructed this author who wrote this book. I mean, Diana's in here. She's the only one who really gets it. And Rabel, Marvin Anderson, Leon Stefanko. These were people that I, well, Leon and I went to school together. And Anderson and Ed Rabel were our teachers. And, and I thought, oh my goodness, this is wonderful. And this is life. This is life when we have incorporated a, uh, an understanding that perhaps this way of life holds something for me, holds something for me. This is evangelism. This is evangelism because they have chosen to see that. And I see so many of you that are here 
but such wonderful little evangelists that you are. You have incorporated this unity way of life into your life, and you show up in this larger life as someone who is what? We can use the word more enlightened. You've chosen to believe that God is good all the time. You've chosen to believe that your thoughts create your world. And to the degree that you are willing to change your way of thinking from perhaps an old limited way of thinking, which may have even told you something like you weren't worthy. Anybody? Well, we don't need a show of hands there. But we ha a lot of times we have a hard enough time just accepting our own worthiness, accepting that we are a beloved child of God. But when we decide to accept all of those things, when we, oh, and the song is coming up again, I'm free, I am unlimited, there are no chains that bind me. I'm free, I am unlimited right now. Favorite teacher of mine, Janet Bowser Manning, wrote those words, and I love that song. And it is so symbolic of what unity, of how unity students really need to be showing up in life, to, to be those perfect little evangelists that we are. It's our choice always. The teachings are there for us. We can release those old, former ways of thinking. We can incorporate these new, positive ideas. And our life, which is the, the, the last of the 12 powers, and you know how each of the 12 powers had a disciple that was attached to that 12 powers. And the last one, life, is Judas Iscariot. Well, you know, it was always hard for me to understand why would you do that? Well, what the idea behind that whole thing is, once again, and it's a part of our teachings, and so many of you wonderful little evangelists are just going around showing that, that we are about moving in consciousness from Adam man, Adam man, to the Christ of man. It's a journey we make in consciousness. It's the tools that we provide, particularly through unity, I believe, that we can take and work with and learn how we can best do this and how we can best show up in life, not only living the blessing we know, blessings we know are there for us, but improving, changing, helping, healing our world. I wonder if maybe you could just close your eyes for just a few minutes. And perhaps within your own heart, your own mind, hold the thought that I always love to encourage people to hold. I am willing, I am willing to make to allow this change in consciousness that I know I can access freely as I release and let go and let God, as I incorporate all of these 12 powers into my beingness, I am willing to be changed at depth. And because of this willingness, and because I know I can trust the one presence, the one power, God the good, I give thanks for healing, for wholeness, for transformation now. And so it is.